Hello, welcome to worship here at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Santa Monica, California. I'm Pastor Eric Schaefer, the senior pastor here at Mount Olive, and we're so glad you've joined us for worship on this, the first Sunday in Advent. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. I invite you to join me now as we confess our sins together. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for Christ's sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by Christ's authority, I therefore declare to you all the entire forgiveness of all your sin. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Jesus Christ, you are the light of the world, the light no shadows can overcome. Stay with us now within this season, as the daylight hours are fading. Let your light break through the shadows and shine within your people here. And 
be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Christ, and come. By your merciful protection, awaken us to the threatening dangers of our sins, and keep us blameless until the coming of your new day. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. As we light this first candle of the wreath, we pray. Savior of the Savior of the nations, come make your home here in us. Feed us with your love that our faith shine ever new and our lives reveal your light. Amen. Um, amen. <laughs> Come take a seat and join me for today's children's sermon. <laughs> Happy New Year! We have a new color and a new season and a new year to start. The color is blue, the color of hope. And Advent is the start of the brand new church year when we wait for the coming of Christ. Let's listen to today's gospel story. Sitting near the temple, Jesus asked his disciples, James and Peter, do you ever worry? They nodded. Yes, we worry. Jesus comforted them. Everyone worries, but remember that God is in charge. You don't have to worry. I won't always be with you, Jesus continued, but remember... God is in charge, no matter what happens. Where are you going? James wondered. Jesus hugged his friend. I am going to be with my Father in heaven. I will come back. Then we will all be together. You, me, God, and all of our friends. How long will we have to wait for you to come back? Peter asked. Nobody knows, answered Jesus. This response confused the disciples. You don't know Jesus? Jesus explained. In springtime, trees show little green leaves. In the summer, the leaves grow big. What happens in fall and winter? They change color and fall from the trees. The leaves on the trees may change many times before I come back. Heaven and earth will pass away and change, just like those leaves. But my promises to you won't. You can trust what I say. The disciples tried not to worry, but they didn't want Jesus to leave. Jesus said, my return is God's surprise. It might be when you're sleeping or playing or when you're very old, but I will return. I love you even when you can't see me. Be ready for God's surprise. So, we are waiting for Jesus to come back to us. We are waiting for him to come in the form of a little itty bitty baby. We are waiting for him to come and fill our hearts with love and hope in this time of Advent. We wait and we wait and we don't know when it's going to happen, but we know we have to be ready for God at all times. Let's say a prayer, friends. Heavenly Father, gracious God, we give you thanks for this new season. We give you thanks for the hope that fills our hearts as we wait for the Christ child to come. Be with us as we share your love and hope in the world. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The first lesson is written in the 64th chapter of Isaiah beginning at the first verse. Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence, as when fire kindles brushwood and the fire causes water to boil.
to make your name known to your adversaries, so that the nations might tremble at your presence. When you did awesome deeds that we did not expect, you came down, the mountains quaked at your presence. From ages past, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who works for those who wait for him. You meet those who gladly do right, those who remember you in your ways. But you were angry, and we sinned. Because you hid yourself, we transgressed. We have all become like one who is unclean, and all our righteous deeds are like a filthy cloth. We all fade like a leaf, and our iniquities, like the wind, take us away. There is no one who calls on your name or attempts to take hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have delivered us into the hand of our iniquity. Yet, O Lord, you are our Father. We are the clay and you are our potter, and we are all the work of your hand. Do not be exceedingly angry, O Lord, and do not remember iniquity forever. Now consider, we are all your people. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is written in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians, beginning at the third verse. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. I give thanks to my God always for you because of the grace of God that has been given you in Christ Jesus. For in every way you have been rich in Christ, in speech and knowledge of every kind, just as the testimony of Christ has been strengthened among you, so that you are not lacking in any spiritual gift as you wait for the revealing of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will also strengthen you to the end, so that you may be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. God is faithful. By God, you were called into the fellowship of God's Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. This is the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Jesus said, In those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will give its light, will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. Then he will send the angels and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you will know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. So beware, keep alert, Neither, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey, when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. What I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. 
This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Christ. If you are age 30 or older, you can probably tell me where you were when you heard the news of the terrorist attacks in New York City and Washington, D.C. on September 11, 2001. We watched in horror as nearly 3,000 died as the Twin Towers collapsed and the Pentagon was attacked. They had all th no thought as they went to work that day that this day would be their last on earth. But it was. Jesus tells us in today's Gospel lesson, keep alert and keep awake. The wonderful SpaceX NASA launch of four astronauts, including one from South Car Southern California this past week, reminded me that similarly, if you're at least 45 years of age or older, you can probably tell me where you were on January 28, 1986. Many of us were watching television that day, including most grade school children. That is because the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, NASA, had injected new life into the space program, with which many of the other in the American public had become bored, by putting a teacher in space. A young woman teacher named Krista McAuliffe from New Hampshire was one of seven U.S. astronauts blasting off in the Challenger space shuttle that day. We watched and waited. The rocket shot high into the air. But suddenly, both the rocket and people's dreams exploded. As the reality of what had just happened began to sink in, all most of us could do was weep. And Jesus tells us that no one knows the day or the hour for the end. Keep alert. Keep awake. Now, for most of us, the end, the end of our own lives, is much less dramatic than a terrorist attack killing thousands or a space shuttle exploding before our eyes. Much less dramatic, but no less painful. I don't know about you, but at the holiday times, I think about my parents a lot. And like some of you, I watched my father die slowly from Alzheimer's disease. I watched this highly educated man, a teacher, high school principal, and school superintendent, slowly and then more rapidly forget who he was, even forgetting his wife of more than 50 years. Like some of you, my mother struggled far too long trying to care for my father at home. He roamed the house all night, not sleeping much at all, and turning the heat up to 90 degrees or more. Everyone became a stranger, a feared stranger. He could no longer dress himself. When he finally went to live in a safe, locked nursing home, Alzheimer's unit, my mother told me that she had slept for what seemed to be the first time in many years. Now, we were lucky than men, luckier than many because my dad kept his good nature to the end. But as too many of you know, that's little compensation when a loved one's brain is turning to mush. Many of you can share similar stories of both slow and rapid death of those you love. Deaths for which you were prepared and those for which you had no time for preparation. And prepared or not, most of us know how difficult these times can be for us and for those we love. We're within a month of Christmas, and we would certainly like to be thinking of other things than the end of the world or the end of our own lives, more pleasant things than terrorist attacks, spatial disasters, or difficult losses of those we love. And this year, I wish we didn't have to think of the more than 250,000 people in the USA who have now died of COVID-19, with too many more to come. But Jesus reminds us in today's Gospel from Mark that the end of his life and the end of all our lives is coming. It may not be coming for the entire globe anytime soon, even if it might feel that way in the midst of a pandemic. Jesus tells us that only God knows the timing, but it is coming for each of us at some time in the near or more distant future. Death for each of us, the end of our world here on earth, is coming for each of us. That's a guarantee. These are not happy thoughts to share on the first Sunday in Advent. Of course, most people have forgotten Advent, or more likely never knew it exists. A time of quiet preparation and reflection seems out of place in the normal hurriedness of our Christmas preparations. 
a time to keep awake and be alert, discerning and expecting to listen for God's presence in our lives. <clears throat> Those are not the themes of our modern culture's pre-Christmas, with its emphasis on buying and selling and its impatience with waiting for anything. And as the ads tell us now, in the midst of this pandemic, we can so easily shop from home in our PJs. There are no lines, no waiting, and little need for preparation. But the themes of Advent, waiting, preparation, reflection, still are, or at least can be, the themes for us Christians. Keep alert. Keep awake. Today's Gospel lesson this first Advent Sunday calls on us to be alert and awake, to be ready for Jesus to come anew into our lives on any and every day. It was certainly chosen as the Gospel for this first Sunday in Advent to remind us to prepare anew for Jesus to come anew into our lives this Christmas. This Advent can bring a time, if we let it, a time for reflection and personal preparation, a time to re-examine our own priorities and refocus them away from consumerism and toward love for others. In this terribly uncertain time, we can still stop and reflect, thanking God for the many blessings that do still exist in our lives, and remembering that God is with us in all times. The promise of Jesus Christ whose birth we prepare for in this Advent season, is still the promise of God's love for all people, even in the midst of a terrible pandemic, a promise for any and all times. It is the promise of God's love for all people, for those who died on September 11th and in the Challenger disaster, as well as our own loved ones, as well as you and me. The promise of Jesus Christ, whose birth we prepare for this Advent season, is still the promise of God's love for all people in this and any season. God's love is coming anew for us, in our, for our lives this Advent and Christmas, as it can and does come anew into our lives every day. While our own end times are coming, as Christians our times not be need, need to be filled with disaster or judgment, but with hope and salvation. As Christians, we know who is coming and why. We know the real reason for the season and we know that our own end times, whenever they may come, are filled with the hope of eternal life with our Lord. So this Advent, let's keep alert. Let's be discerning and expecting. Let's keep awake. Let's pray, study, worship, and prepare. And let's continually thank God for the gift of His Son, Jesus Christ, whose birth brings with us the promise of eternal life with our Lord. Amen.
Let us confess our faith using the words we know as the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our prayers of intercession, after each prayer petition, I will say, Hear us, O God, and then we will all say together, Your mercy is great. God of power and might, tear open the heavens and come quickly to this world, this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. We pray for the ministry we share in Christ's name. Open our hearts to to your call for justice, peace, and healing. Attune us to the needs of the world as you draw near. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for this planet in need of restoration, for devastated habitats, polluted waters, thawing ice, blazing fires, swelling floods, and long-lasting droughts. Renew the face of the earth and our relationship to it. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for all people who care for others in our community and around the world. Fill them with compassion and the power to respond with justice for those who are oppressed, with welcome for those who are excluded, and with relief for those who suffer. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for people who are in crisis as the seasons change, for those without homes facing severe weather, for those who are unemployed or underemployed, and for those in poverty or facing food insecurity, and for all those served by the member agencies of the West Side Coalition for Housing, Hunger, and homelessness. Relieve their burdens, sustain their bodies, and ease their minds. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray for the people in our families and congregation who live with depression, anxiety, chronic pain, addiction, and other invisible illnesses. Ease their suffering and support them when they struggle. Hear us, O God, your mercy, mercy is great. great. We give thanks for the lives and witness of those who died while waiting for justice, peace, or healing. Those whose names we know and those whose names are known only to you. Sustain all who still yearn for the completion of your redeeming work. Hear us, O God, your, your mercy, mercy is great. great. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. Once again, thank you for joining us here at worship at Mount Olive Lutheran Church in Santa Monica, California on this, the first Sunday in Advent. Our weekly schedule here at Mount Olive continues as it has been these last weeks and months. Each week we provide a new service pre-recorded on our YouTube channel that's ready by Saturday. And I send an email on Saturday around three o'clock to let you know the, how to get to that service. And also in that email, I tell you of our gathering that Sunday at 9 a.m., where some of us gather to watch the service together. 
If you're not on my email list and would like to be added so you know about each new worship service, please drop me an email, send it to pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org, and I'll get you on that list. And then as you've seen, we have people helping us with the service, people who read the first two lessons, lead the major prayers, and also, and also send us passing of the peace waves. If you'd like to do any of those, send me an email also and we'll get you on the list. Pastor at mtolivelutheranchurch.org. Now I'd like to introduce you to Cheryl Anderson, the secretary of our Mount Olive Lutheran Church Congregation Council. Hi, I'm Cheryl Anderson, secretary of the Congregational Council. My adult children, Sarah, Sean, and I joined Mount Olive about three years ago. You may have seen us here reading the lessons and the prayers during these Safer at Home services. But today I'm here with a different message, a message of need and of hope. This has been a difficult year for all of us, and it's been a difficult year for Mount Olive. While we deeply appreciate how many of you have been able to continue giving and have even been able to increase your giving, many aren't as fortunate. Additionally, the preschool, which is a major source of revenue, was closed for six months, and even though it's opened again, it's not at full capacity. They also have higher expenses due to COVID protocol. And all the groups that used to come here for meetings aren't able to come, so we're not receiving their rental income. It's impacted our budget. And yet Jesus still calls us to be here to serve, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, and comfort the afflicted, even in dark and difficult times. This week, we did our Thanksgiving dinner as a drive through and fed hundreds of people, but at a cost of $3,000. Our new little pantry is open to any neighbor in need, but it's emptied almost every night, and it's going to cost us about $1,000 to keep it full and available each month. So on behalf of the council, I'm asking you to prayerfully consider a special year-end gift to Mount Olive. I know it's a lot, but it's important. God's work through our hands must continue. Perhaps the money that you were going to spend traveling at Thanksgiving could instead feed a family for a week. The dress that you don't have to buy for the Christmas parties you aren't going to attend could help Mount Olive stay out of the red. The tickets to a canceled New Year's Eve bash could help someone stay alive until 2021. And remember, remember the widow's might, the boy with the loaves and the fishes, the widow of Zarephath. Even when they're small, our gifts can come together and combine and change the world. As we light the first Advent candle, the candle of hope, help us shine that light on our neighbors, especially our neighbors in need. Thank you for your prayerful consideration and thank you for your gifts. Thank you, Cheryl. And here's how you can support Mount Olive financially. You can give to Mount Olive by check through the US mail Mail us your check to 1343 Ocean Park Boulevard, Santa Monica, California, 90405. If you're local, you can put your gift of a cash or check through the secure mail slot in our church office door. You can also give to us electronically through two ways. Our website, mtolivelutheranchurch.org, there's a giving button, and through that giving button, you can make a gift from your credit card and even from your checking or savings account. And we also take gifts by Venmo, Venmo.com slash Mount Olive. However you support us, we are so grateful. Thank you. For our thanksgiving for the word, after each paragraph, I will say, for your word of life, O God, and we'll all say together, we give you thanks and praise.
Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on a desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God, renew your gifts within us, renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all call upon you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Let us pray together the words we know as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The creator of the stars, bless your advent waiting. The long-expected Savior, fill you with love. The unexpected Spirit, guide your journey, now and forever. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Came down.